In this video, you will learn how to design the project. You selected a 2D slab slash girder system when you created the project. Sophistic Structural Desktop then selects the 2D slab slash girder template. This template includes three tasks in the project navigation that can be used for the slab design. Those tasks are design parameters of area elements, design ULS, and design SLS. Let's take a look at the design parameters of area elements task. It allows you to set design parameters for every group of area elements. You can choose from four reinforcement types. Two reinforcement layers orthogonally, two reinforcement layers, three reinforcement layers and circular reinforcement. In the direction and distance column, you can set the direction and the distance of the principal and cross reinforcement. The distances are measured from the middle of the rebars. You can specify rebar details via the settings in the reinforcement column. You can set the diameter as well as the minimum and maximum amount of your reinforcement bars. Use the calculator command to calculate the reinforcement values based on a rule. Let's use the same rule for the upper and lower principal reinforcement. Both have a diameter of 10 mm every 150 mm. Lastly, crack control lets you define the maximum crack width and steel stresses. The maximum crack width for the principal reinforcement for the upper and lower layers is 0.3 mm. You can define different parameters for every group of every area element in your project. Just click on the new button on the top right. You can select a single group or multiples in the selection column and assign specific parameters. For instance, you can tell the program that group 3 does not have an orthogonal two-layered reinforcement, but a normal two-layered reinforcement instead. Alternatively, you can select groups visually. Left-click the Select button. Once clicked, a system visualization opens up and you can select multiple groups. Don't forget to confirm group selections with the Finish Selection button. Now you can configure the parameters for the selected groups. However, in this project, you don't need the definition of row 2 and 3, so let's delete them. Confirm the settings by clicking OK. The system saves these settings. They are now available for the Design Area Elements task. Let's proceed with the design of area elements in the ultimate limit state task. At the very top, you can select the design case number and save the results of this ULS design task. You can temporarily adjust the safety factors for gamma C and gamma S. This selection of load case table shows all available superposed load cases. They have to be defined as a ULS combination in the Combination Rules task. All load cases that include support forces and bedding stresses are automatically selected for punching checks. You can adjust the shear design settings in the Shear Reinforcement tab. Select how to perform the punching checks and specify it further. The maximum bending reinforcement ratio in the punching area is set to not exceed 1.5% of the concrete's cross-section area. Outside the punching area, the bending reinforcement is limited to 0.2% of the concrete's cross-sectional area. The program avoids shear reinforcement by increasing bending reinforcement up to this ratio. In the Control Parameter tab, you will find more design options. However, for this project, the default settings are just fine. In the previous video, you learned how to adjust text and graphical outputs 
which also applies to the Design ULS task. Let's start the design by clicking the OK button. The module list shows the modules used for the calculation process of this task. Both the BMS and the Wing program modules show up. The user manuals provide further information about the design procedure. To read up on them, go to Help, User Manuals and open the BMS manual. The next task is design of area elements in serviceability limit state. The ULS design case 1 is available and is used as the basis for the SLS design. Enter the SLS design result case number below. The selection of load cases table includes all eligible load cases for the SLS design. By default, all load cases of the quasi-permanent combination are selected. In the Quad Elements tab, you can select one of two crack width control options. Either the diameter of the reinforcement is checked with the tables from the design code, or you can manually enter a maximum value for the crack width. The remaining tabs in this task work similar as the ULS design task. Click OK to confirm the settings and process the task. This calculation prompts a warning. You can spot the orange warning icon with an exclamation mark next to the module name. The tasks protocol gives you further information about the warning. This warning tells you not to select the original Euro code without a national annex for the design. Doing so could result in high reinforcement values. It is fine for this showcase example, but we recommend to use a country-specific national annex. Let's move on to beam design. Therefore, create a new group in the project navigation and rename it Design Beams. Now insert two tasks. One, Design ULS Beams and one design SLS beams task. The beam design tasks are self-explanatory, so discussing them in more detail is not necessary. The preset is fine and you can calculate them immediately by confirming the task with OK. Do the same with the design of SLS beam task. Design results for both area and beam elements are now available in the database and are ready to be checked. With that, we are at the end of this video.